My name is Kevin MacDonald and I'm based between the School of Agriculture and Food Science and the School of Biosystems and Food Engineering. And today I'm talking to you from the Sunny College Research Farm, UCD Lions Farm. And this is a facility which is on the outskirts of Dublin, located between Selbridge and Leakslip, and it supports the teaching and research platforms for the School of Agriculture and Food Science and the School of Veterinary Medicine. So the facilities that we have here in Lyons Estate, they act as the supporting tools for our teaching programme that we have in the School of Agriculture and Food Science. So across their four years, students from dairy business, from animal science, animal and crop production, from equine science, from the Agricultural Systems Technology programme, and from the new crops production programme, they'll be coming to Lyons to put into practice in this outdoor laboratory the, the lessons that they have learned and to support their in-class teaching with the trials and the research that we're doing here at Lyons Estate. Now on the farm, we have a 200 cow dairy herd, we have 400 yews in the sheep flock, we have approximately 100 animals in the beef herd, we have horses to support the equine sector, we have pigs for the piggery, we also have about 50 hectares of combinable crops under the crops research program. And if we consider agriculture in Ireland, one of the key aspects associated with it is the production of grass. And the production of grass is hugely important for Irish agriculture. It underpins the dairy sector, it underpins the beef sector, the sheep sector, the horse sector. So it's really critical that we do this and we do this well. So one of the programs that we're looking at is how could we manage to use grass as a source of carbon sink and to sequester carbon into the grass program. So we're looking at a range of different types of grass varieties. We're looking at combinations of grass with legumes and with herbs to see how it supports the carbon sequestration potential. And that enables us to reduce the carbon footprint associated with dairy production, with beef production, sheep production. On our crop production side of it, we're seeing a lot more changes in weather patterns at the moment. So we're getting more droughts, we're getting more severe rainfall events. And that's changing how crops and indeed grassland respond. So we have set up a number of different experiments to see how could crops respond to these production strategies. So we have wheat trials that are looking at different compaction, different water levels. We're looking at if a crop is experiencing severe levels of drought, will that change the ability of it to produce uh, grains? So we're looking at if we know that, could we manage that crop a little bit differently? We're using advanced tools such as sensors in the ground, sensors on the leaves of the plant to measure how the plant is responding. We're using drones to capture hyperspectral imaging, images of those crops. So we're looking at the, the non-visible part of the spectrum and we're seeing are there changes in how that grass is growing or how that crop is growing that the drones can pick up and help us make better management decisions at an earlier intervention stage in that crop or in that grassland production strategy. So if we take an example of oats and how oats have changed in the last couple of years, historically we use them for uh, equine feeds, for horse feeds. But now because of their gluten-free content, we're using them in celiac diets. So oats have a slow release of energy, which is really useful for people. So if you're using oats, for example, in your breakfast cereal, it's a slow release of energy throughout the day. So that's very, very useful. However, oats are very vulnerable to wet weather diseases. And in Ireland, that can be a problem as well. So what we're looking at is ways of how we might manage oats. So we're looking at, for example, different production strategies. We're looking at the different genetics that we can express in the oats as well to see which varieties might grow well. We're looking at timing of establishment as well to see could we influence the ability of plants to sustain wet weather diseases. So that's an important part of what we can do on, for example, cereals. We're also looking at, for example, malting barley. And the malting barley supports uh, the, the agri-food industry, the drinks industry, and especially the whiskey sector. So the quality of the malt that we're producing in Ireland is internationally recognised and we're looking at ways of supporting that through both winter and spring crops. So there's good opportunities in supporting those sort of agri-sector industries. And part of that, I suppose, lends itself to the innovations associated with agriculture. So we're developing an agri-hub here at Lyons Estate. It's going to be developed in conjunction with Nova UCD. And that's giving companies an opportunity to work more closely with us. We have historically worked with a lot of companies in Lyons Estate. But this agri-hub brings them closer into us. They're going to spin into us. They have particular problems they want to solve. They want to work with the expertise that we have here, the international linkages we have. That brings SMEs into a whole international dimension and gives them the opportunity to learn from international experiences as well. So that innovations hub allows companies to spin in to solve problems, to think a little bit about what will the future be for the agri-food agri sector, and then to help students think about 
how might they innovate a little bit more? So when they come to Lions, we're going to get them to think outside the box a little bit more. We build upon the principles they've learned in Belfield, but we're looking to see where do you think the sector is going in the next five to 10 years? Do you want to see the changes that are evolving the sector? These people, these graduates, you will be the leaders, the innovators in this sector of the next five to 10 years. So let's challenge your thinking now. Let's change how you might look at dairy production. Let's change how you might look at grassland production because that's gonna change the strategy for food production going forward. We've had great examples of companies that have spun out of lines. For example, in the horse breeding side of it and the speed genes associated with it. We've had spin outs in sheep genetics. We've had spin outs in grass production strategies in also trials associated with precision agriculture. And we're using all of these tools to enhance the whole digital agricultural space, which is the next evolving platform associated with agriculture. So I hope you've enjoyed this whistle stop tour of the teaching and research that we have here online farm it supports the teaching programs in the school of agriculture and food science it's been a wonderful sunny day here today and i hope that you'll join us here at lions estate when you come and do your program in ucd in the school of agriculture i can't guarantee the weather will be as good we'll certainly have plenty of animals and crops and research for you to see here in ucd 2020